Something has got to be done about this, Claiborne. These renegades are running all the decent settlers right out of the valley. And it's my idea that Jack Hammond is behind the whole dirty mess. But why Jack Hammond? Why put two and two together, Marshal? If he don't buy these ranchers out at his own price, what happens? Now, now, calm down, Craig. I'll tell you what happens. If they don't sell, their houses are burned down. The cowhands are murdered, and the cattle is rustled. You've got to do something about this. Dad, we were fired at out on the west section. Anybody hurt? No, but we were lucky. What happened? Well, Charlie and I were herding a few head of strays into the pasture when three men came from nowhere and started shooting at us. Do you know who they were? They were masked, Dad. But we'd never have come out alive if our men from the north section hadn't come to our rescue. This has gone far enough, Claiborne. I'm going to organize a group of vigilantes and handle this my own way. Better be careful, Charlie, about taking the law into your own hands. You're forcing me to do this. You may not think so, Craig, but I'm doing the best I can. Think it over. And don't act too hasty. So long. Good day, Miss Laura. Bye, Marshal. again. Half a dozen of his men drove us away. This is getting to be the same old story. What's the matter? Has he got the end and sign on you? No. Craig's a smart hombre. Yes, I know he is. That's why he's held on to the ranch so long. But don't worry, he's only living on borrowed time. Say, Mr. Hammond, what are you going to do with all this land? That's my business. You're being well paid, aren't you? Yeah. Well, then break it up and go have a drink on me. I just wanted to warn you, if the shoe fits. This morning I heard talk of Craig forming a group of vigilantes. Now, you wouldn't want that to happen, would you, Hammond? Would you be in favor of such a move? You know I wouldn't. I represent law and order. But I'm just tipping you off. You can take it or leave it. I don't like what he told me about Craig wanting to form a posse of vigilantes. Say, do you know Tex Landers, the cattle buyer? Oh, I know who he is. He's out there in the bar now. Well, get this and listen carefully. He's on his way to the Craig Ranch to buy cattle, and he's got five or $10,000 on him in cash. Well, how does that tie in with Craig and the vigilantes? It ties in perfectly. Now, here's what I want you to do. When Tex Landers leaves here, I want you and Weber to follow him. Good morning, Marshal. Howdy, Weber. Morning, Charlie. Howdy, Craig. What's on your mind, Claiborne? I'm looking for Tex Landers. The cattle buyer? Yeah. He's stopping at the Wayside Inn. Weber here says he hasn't been in his room for a couple of days. That's right. And he was heading out to your ranch to buy some cattle. He had quite a bit of money on him, Charlie. Naturally, we're worried. Well, I don't blame you. I've been expecting Landers, but he hasn't showed up yet. Mind if we take a look around? Oh, no, go ahead. What's in there? Nothing. Well, you might as well start here.
His slander's all right. Then he's dead. I can't imagine how he got here. We haven't used this bunkhouse since we faced a new one. What's that? No one's accusing anybody of anything. Well, if I was Marshal, I think I'd know what to do. Well, you're not. And I'd be obliged if you'd wait outside while I talk to Craig. You don't think for a moment, Marshal, that I killed this man, do you? No, I don't, Craig. You've got a mighty good reputation. But I've got a hunch that somebody's out to wreck it. And you, too. I'm going to take a look around, Charlie. I'll get the house if you want me. Now, don't worry, Mother. They found the body, and that's all I know about it. But who could have done it, Dad? That don't take much guessing. Charlie, you can't handle this thing alone. You've got to have help. I'd sure like to see Crash Corrigan and his two pals walk in right now. But what could they do? Plenty. They're fighters. I ought to know. I helped raise Crash. He'd come a-flying if you'd ask him. Why not write to him, Dad? This is my problem, Mother. Besides, I don't want to ask favors. How'd I ever come to raise such an ornery son? Maybe it's natural. I'm kind of ornery myself. <laughs> Trace is always getting us into something with a gal in it. <laughs> Why do you think I'm here? Oh, well, Mother Craig's a fine old lady. And uh, make no mistake about that. She's 60 years young and a picherino. Well, I'm afraid she's a little too old for me. Well, Mother Craig helped bring me up, and when she hollers help, we ride. We're not very welcome around here. I guess Mother Craig meant it when she said she needed help. Well, let's get over there then. Hammonds run most of the other ranchers out. But the Craigs ain't quitters. And we're staying till we get Hammond or he gets us. What about the murder you spoke of in your letter, Mother Craig? That's probably some more of Hammond's dirty work. I figure he shot Landers and put his body in our bunkhouse, so Charlie would be accused. When do you expect Mr. Craig back? He left this morning in the buckboard, the hills, I think. Alibi, you ride into the Wayside Inn and check up on that outfit. Denny and I'll stay here. Oh, shuck. You would send me into some cheap hotel while you and Denny stay here and get all the good home cooking. <laughs> Come 
on, Elmer. You might be kind of handy. Always am. <laughs> I saw it with my own eyes. Tex Landers murdered in Craig's bunkhouse. That was more than ten days ago, and what's been done about it? Nothing. Charlie Craig hasn't even been arrested. Are you men going to stand for this? No. no. Why ain't he in jail? He ain't no better than the rest of us. Well, I demand that the marshal make an arrest so we get a rope and do the job ourselves. Now you're talking. Yeah. 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 Howdy, stranger. How are you? Well, that'll be cow kick. That's the first time I've seen one of them talking dolls since I was back in Kansas City. Can you work it? Sure, but right now I'm more interested in getting a room. Have you got any open? We've got the best rooms north of the Rio Grande for $2 a day, if you make your own bed. And $3 if uh, Weber here does it. I reckon for three and a half, you'd tuck me in bed and kiss me goodnight. Quiet, Elmer. It's a deal for $2, and I'll let Elmer here be the chambermaid. Hold everything. Wait a minute. What is this chambermaid gag? I'm surprised at your ignorance, Elmer. A chambermaid is a servant who makes up your room, your chamber. Uh -uh. Not me, Alibi. I got a proposition for you, stranger. Put us on a little show tonight, and the room and drinks are on the house. You hear that, Elmer? What do you say? It's okay with me. Anything to keep from being a chambermaid. Well, name your medicine. I'll take some ginger beer. Give me some Kentucky bourbon. But you're not in Kentucky. After a couple down the hatch, I don't care where I am. <laughs> you run this joint? I run it and own it. Oh, a plutocrat. A plutocrat. <laughs> <laughs> you, my friend, are you a rancher? No. You work in town? No. Well, what do you do? Mind my own business. <laughs> Jolly little number, ain't it? <laughs> Bet he gets awful lonesome. <laughs> the little fellow's quite a philosopher. Yeah, but don't encourage him because he can get to be an awful pest. <laughs> well, Hammond, I think I'll be riding. See you later. All right. That gun, Blair. Now turn around. Back up. You thieves find a good place to hide out, don't you? You're making a mistake, Craig. Sure I am. By not filling you full of lead right now. But I want you alive. Talk for the Landers killing. Oh, you're loco. I don't know anything. Come on, get him back up. It's Blair. He's 
in trouble. to worry about him anymore. serenading your plum local. That's a right tolerable tune. I like a little serenading now and then. Sort of makes life soft. As soon as I put up my saddle, I'll be back and tell you. Hiya, Romeo. <laughs> Maybe the lady doesn't like your kind of music. Maybe you think she'd go for your singing. <laughs> Why, you... <laughs> Some harmonica player. Ha, 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 ha. 
<laughs> Woman trouble again. Say, what'd you find out, Alibi? Well, Hammond's bartender Weber's trying to stir up a mob against Craig. Well, that bears out what Mother told us. Was that all you learned? No. Most of Hammond's men are hiding out in the hills. In the hills? Yeah. Well, that's where Craig's headed. Think he showed up here yet? No, we haven't laid eyes on him. Well, if he don't show up by morning, we better go looking for him. Wait here, boys. The big fella is Hammond, and the one with the gray shirt is Marshal Claiborne. We'd better go over to the house. Mother and Laura may need us. Say, Hammond knows you, Alibi. Yeah. I reckon you'd better stay here. Okay. Come in. Good morning, Mr. Scragg. Good morning. Howdy, ma'am. Not so well since I recognized you. What are you in after? Is Charlie around? Well, maybe so. Why? That's our business. Shut up. Why do you want Charlie? Well, I'd like to ask him a few questions. Father isn't home. We haven't seen him since yesterday morning. What's going on here? Who are these men? Some friends of ours. Came out to do a little hunting for rattlesnakes and coyotes. I said, what's going on here? Well, I'm Marshal Clever, and I have a warrant for Charlie Craig's arrest. What's the charge? Murder. Why, you are... When Mr. Craig comes home, I'll see that he comes to town. Thank you. I'll bet you will. I don't like your tone, and I don't like your looks, and I don't like you. Now get out! I warned you to watch your step, Hammond. Now get along. I'll expect to see Craig in town later. What's it all about, Granny? I'm so worried. You can stop worrying, Miss Laura. We'll find Mr. Craig before they do. They're leaving, Mother. I have a hunch that Hammond was trying to pull a fast one. Oh, Craig. Well, if his gang's holding Charlie, I reckon that they brought the marshal along just to throw us off the track. That sounds reasonable, Granny. Then we better get to Mr. Craig and fast. Bye. Laura, fetch your father's rifle. I may be nearsighted, but I can still hit the bullseye at 50 yards. Come on, Alibi. Saddle your horse. We're riding. Charlie Craig. Yeah. I don't know you, but you don't look like cutthroats to me. Well, my name's Crash Corrigan. Crash Corrigan? 
I'm sure glad you got here. I want you to meet my partner, Denny Moore. Howdy, Mr. Craig. Howdy, Denny. And my other partner, Alibi Terhune. Alibi? Hi. Say, uh, where are you hurt? It's my shoulder and my ankle. I thrown away from the wreck. I tried to get away. Now, up... Don't try to talk now, Mr. Craig. Just take it easy. Say, we're going to have to work fast. I'm riding in tonight to tell Claiborne that we brought Craig back to the ranch. Craig alive? Are you sure? I saw him right after I found Blair and took him to the shack. You said Greg went over the cliff. Yeah, but Cargan and his pals found him and took him to the ranch. Well, I'm tired of fooling around. Craig's got to be cleaned out. That's what the boys think. And they get mighty restless. Well, they're going to get plenty of excitement pronto. Well, what's the plan? Remember, Mike, round up the boys. And I'll ride out to the shack tomorrow and give them the rest of their orders. Yes, sir. All right, Snooper. Get them up. Keep walking. In the saloon. In that room there. He was mighty interested in your conversation from outside that window. Eavesdropping, huh? Well, well. You know, folks that do that don't usually hear anything good about themselves. Do you ever say anything good? What's your interest in Craig's ranch, Corrigan? Oh, maybe I'm just interested to see that he keeps it. Get his gun, Weber. I'll stay a little longer. I think you will. Oh. Trail him, Mike, but don't let him trap you. up some kind of a scheme. He and his gang are going to meet at the hideout tomorrow to talk it over. 
It's sure lucky you spotted that hideout shack, Mr. Craig. We're going to ride up there and give it the once-over. That's what you think. And no gunplay from you two. I'm taking Craig in. Come on, get up. No, you don't. I've changed my mind. I'm finishing this right now and here. That's awful big talk, mister. I think you better drop that shooting iron. You were just in time, Denny. We're going to lock this critter up, Mr. Craig. Put him in the tool house and chain him to the anvil. With pleasure. Come on. You may hold the upper hand now. But wait till Hammond gets to work on you. Oh, so it is Hammond that's back of this gang. I didn't say so, and you can't prove it. Oh, yes, you can. And if you're smart, you'll tell the whole story. And you might save your own neck. Crash and Denny just rode away, and they said for you to wait for them here. Good. That'll give us a chance to persuade our friend here to talk. You want to talk? I ain't saying nothing. Solitude sometimes corrects a man's thinking. Come on, Mother Craig. We'll leave him alone with his thoughts for a while. All right. One of us is going to have to get down there pronto. Well, I can get around those boulders on the far side. Good. I'll keep you covered from here. And I don't care what you do. Burn the house, fire the barns, anything to clean Craig out. When do we start? Get to the house around bedtime. When they're asleep and the lights are out, let them have it. The rest of the boys will be out on the range to raid the cattle as soon as the commotion draws everybody to the house. Will Craig be surprised? We'll really finish him this time. And I'm riding with you to see there won't be no slip-ups. I'll tell you later. Let's get out of here. Now, you be sure and call me at the right time and then come in and do your stuff. And you be sure and put it on good and thick. Leave it to me. Get a good night's rest? What do you mean a good night's rest? Are you thirsty? I'll fetch you some water. No, I'm not thirsty. This reminds me of a death watch I on once. Just before the convict was hanged. 
But he kept asking for water every few minutes. Uh, did you see a man hanged? Yeah, and it was awful. They led him up those last 13 steps. Put a big hood over his head. Tied a noose around his neck with that big knot right here. Pushed him out onto that trap. And the trap was sprung. And his neck was broken. Just like that. And to think of all the agony he could have saved himself, it just turned state's evidence. I heard about that evidence stuff. What does it mean? Well, it means if you tell the state all you know, they go easy on you. They don't hang you. Alibi? Where are you? Here in the tool house, Mrs. Craig. Crash and Denny just got back, and they brought in a fellow named Blair. Blair? Well, I know him from Hammond's Hotel. He's confessed. So the fellow named Mike Felt killed Herr Flanders. Why, he can't frame me, the dirty double-crosser. He did it himself. Now, where have they got him? Up at the house. Come on, let's go see him. Hey, wait a minute, mister. Hey, don't go away, mister. Come back here. I want to tell you something. I got something to tell you. Come here. If I could have gotten there just a little sooner, I could have found out what they were going to do at the Craig Ranch house. Well, when's all this going to happen, Denny? About midnight, when everybody's asleep. But I think it's just a trick to keep us away from the range. I don't get it. They're going to raid the Craig cattle at sunup. Oh. Oh, now I get it. Well, we'll just fool them. We'll be out there with the cattle when Hammond shows up with these rustlers. But what about Mother Craig and Laura? Well, I reckon we'd better hide them out in the barns and leave Alibi with them for protection. Well, we've got plenty to do. We'd better get moving. Great, Weber. Sure. As soon as the bonfire gets going good... We ride out to the range to meet you and the boys. Right. That ought to get you there just after sunup. Now, you better start riding and take Butch with you. Blair, you round up the rest of the boys and have them here at 4 o'clock in the morning. All right. Well, you'd be safe here, and you can see all this and happening from over there. I wish Dad hadn't insisted on riding with Crash and the boys. He's not well yet. He'd be a lot sicker if he couldn't be in on the kill. Anyway, we got a swell surprise for them when this mess is cleared up. How about it, Alibi? That's right. What have you two been up to? You'll find out soon enough. Well, I got a little job to do, and then I'll be back. Oh, you better turn down that lantern. Turning in now. Wait a while, get my chance to go to sleep. We leave the horses here and sneak around the back. lights in the house. And now we'll just wait. Here's a match. Come on, 
Let's get back to the horses. Now be a swell bonfire. Well, it's a goner now. Let's get out of here. Tell the boys what happened. You're safe here in the barn. Go ahead, Alibi. We're all right. looks as if we've lost our home. We can always build a new one, dear. And we will. Set the ranch house on fire. Some of you men better ride back. That's just what Hammond would want you to do. What about Laura and Mother? Don't you worry none about them, Mr. Craig. They're safe, and besides, I'm going back. Well, we'll all stay here and keep a date with Jack Hammond. This is it, man. Get your horses. Craig and his men, they've crossed us up. We lead them up the hanging rock and blast them to pieces. Two men with the rifles get up in those rocks. Let Craig and his men come through and then let them have it. The rest of us will ride around this way and come in from behind. Well, 
Looks like they vanished into thin air. Well, there's only one place it could have gone. Through Tunnel Rock. Oh, wait a minute, fellas. We don't want to ride into any hornet's nest. Danny and I will go ahead on foot. When we get in the rocks, you follow. Chinaman's chance. I'll get Hammond. You get the others. All right, Trey.
beat your fighting days are over. All right, Hammond. On your horse. I think this written confession of Mike will start all your prisoners on a long vacation. Thanks, Alibi. How'd you get it out of him, Alibi? Oh, Mother and I framed him. We just used a straight face and a little poker bluff. <laughs> and now, Crash, I want to thank you and the boys for giving us a hand. And that goes for me, too. And me. And I want you all to come and visit us when our new house is built. That's a date. That's two dates. Well, you can't shake me. I'll be there, too. <laughs> <laughs>